welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's show, we will chat with Philip Chong, Rocky Chan, and Tina Ho from Quincy Asian Resources. They have a lot going on, so we'll get a good update from them. First, though, we check out the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, we have some sunshine out there. The fog has given way to uh, sunshine, blue skies, 61 degrees, mild this afternoon, near 70, with a mix of sun and clouds. For tonight, uh, clouding up, lows in the upper 40s. That sets the stage for a wet Saturday. Rain, maybe even some embedded thunderstorms throughout the day tomorrow with uh, highs in the mid 50s. The rain should taper off late tomorrow night. Temperatures drop to the lower 50s, setting the stage for a better Sunday. Mix of sun and clouds, just a slight chance for a shower Sunday with a high and low 60s. A little cooler on Monday, but still lots of sunshine with the first full day of spring on Monday and a high in the mid 50s. Again, sunshine, 61 degrees in Quincy right now. In the news today, the city continues to make plans to update the Furnace Brook Golf Club in Quincy. The city took control of the club earlier this year and Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch says it needs some significant improvements. You know, things haven't been maintained that well over the last few years and largely due in part because they uh, you know, the group was going to spend money with the lease coming up, so um, understandably so, that's human nature. The thing we did talk about was a new clubhouse up there. Um, the clubhouse that's there is, is is very old, antiquated, doesn't meet any ADA requirements. Um, there's some structural deficiencies, so the decision is looking at a new clubhouse on the site that would serve the golf needs, but also serve the neighborhood if they want to come up and have a hamburger or something. Um, they have food service for that. Um, so, um, yeah, Commissioner Murphy from Natural Resources and his team are doing a good job uh, working with the staff that we've hired up there. Uh, we hope that uh, it'll be a very productive year on the revenue side, which helps offset the, the cost side, the expense side. Mayor says some of the club's employees did stay on the job, and the city recently hired former Granite Links golf pro Tom Ellis as the new golf pro for the Furnace Brook Golf Club. Mayor said that rumors that he was planning to sell the golf course to developers are completely untrue, and that he looks forward to turning the club into a first-class golfing, recreational, and social spot for Quincy residents. LBC Developers has begun the process of trying to win approval for a new six-story, 215-unit apartment complex in Quincy Center. Last week, the company made an initial presentation to the Quincy Planning Board to build the new development on property that they own at the corner of Revere Road and Hancock Street. LBC's architect, Dave Snell, presented what would be called Redstone. This is looking uh, along Revere Road, looking back up towards Hancock. Uh, this is the public garage here on the right. This gives you a sense of the scale of the building. We've talked about how the upper floors start to step back and sculpt the skyline here uh, to give you know, an, uh, a nice feel uh, to the mass of the building, <clears throat> stepping it back at the end so that the scale steps down. You'll see balconies carved out at the corner, opportunities for outdoor space for some units. Um, which we think is a nice added amenity. Uh, the garage entrance here often uh, is here and covered, um, as is the, the loading area. Plan also includes some ground level retail space and that 66 space parking garage. LBC owns the Nova Residences apartment building right nearby, also owns the piece of land at Dennis Ryan Parkway and Revere Road, but has not presented development plans for that parcel yet. Planning Board continued the hearing on Redstone. However, Planning Department Director Jim Fatsy says the plan was positively received. Thomas Crane Public Library in Quincy may have a new director soon. The Board of Library Trustees voting unanimously recently to offer the job to Sarah Sliman. Sliman is the current director of the Brookline Public Library, previously was director of the Turner Free Library in Randolph, assistant director of the Thayer Library in Braintree, and a branch manager in the Mattapan Library. If approved by Mayor Thomas Koch, Slimad would begin her new duties in Quincy May 1st. The current director, Megan Allen, announced her retirement recently. She was appointed director in 2013 and served as assistant director for nine years prior to becoming director. Coming up, Philip Chong, Rocky Chan, and Tina Ho from Quincy Asian Resources will be joining us next.
Welcome back to folks at Quincy Asian Resources. Are extremely busy as always. We have uh, several different programs to talk about uh, today, and maybe a recap of things that have already happened uh, in 2022. So we welcome Philip Chong, Rocky Chan, and uh, newcomer. Maybe folks aren't familiar with yet Tina Ho, but uh, you will be because uh, she is really the brains behind the operation. <laughs> so welcome to all three of you. Thanks for coming, Philip. Good to see you. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, it's our pleasure. It's our How pleasure. Are you doing? Very well, thank yeah. you. Yeah, uh, the weather's getting better. Yes. Looks like the pandemic is is waning. Thankfully, yes. uh, folks are starting to get back to some normal routines. Are you finding that at Quarry as well? Uh, definitely. Yeah. And uh, the surge uh, of the Omicron in early January definitely gave us some hard time. Um, but we we're still working hard to support uh, our clients and the city being so supportive. Yeah, it forced you to put Lunar New Year uh, into a virtual uh, operation again this year, right? Mm. Yes, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. So, um, because, you know, it's been 30 something years that we've been doing in the partnership with the city and our uh, uh, community supporters uh, and also Quincy Public Schools. Uh, but the team been so creative and innovative yep. and with our board, uh, they did some amazing stuff to give back uh, to everyone. In Quincy. Yes. Now I know that uh, at the height of the pandemic, uh, getting people critical food, yeah. um, clothing, medical services, yeah. vaccinations, testing yes. was all extremely important. Is that still part of the routine or yes. is that taking a vaccine? Yes. Still I definitely the volume. Uh, yeah. It's going down um, some big portion, but I think that mental support and uh, being here and uh, it's part of the extension for the city that showing, you know, uh, we all hands together. Sure. Um, yeah. So it just been so, uh, you know, uh, resonating in terms of everything happening in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have a home here in Quincy that we can count on each other. So, yeah. yeah. Now is Quarry open again to the public? I mean, you can yes. come in. You are open. Okay. Yes, we are open. Okay. Uh, we, we've been open and um, uh, the team been working hard doing Tai Chi class with the elders. Oh, okay. So making sure they, they're active. Very good. Uh, the youth, um, you know, since uh, last summer, uh, they're doing amazing stuff, mm -hmm. bringing the youth out. Uh, it, it's also, people think that um, besides the elders and, and others uh, getting the, the biggest impact, but the youth actually uh, with the impact of not being able to go to school. Yes, at the time, so yeah. yeah. And Rocky, I know that uh, the youth programs are really something that you're very concerned about. Yeah, um, when we were going through the pandemic, <clears throat> even before it, we were f focusing on breaking the stigma of mental health in the immigrant community. Right. And then when the pandemic hit, and we saw the effect of remote learning and the isolation that was going on, um, we focused our programs to have more of a mental health component, yep. like check-ins. And now that we are in a hybrid at Quarry, we um, are continuing our bubble tea time, which is a, a once, once a month uh, activity where uh, youth can sign up and come in and meet in person, have free bubble tea, and have a guided discussion on topics that really concern them that they may not be able to share with their parents or they want uh, can't share with their with their best friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you say stigma, what do you mean? There's a, a stigma in the immigrant community regarding mental health. Okay. Um, some are more severe than others, mm -hmm. but it's the idea that it's a shameful thing to talk about. I see. Or. Um, it's a private matter that uh, should stay only in the home. Okay, so yeah. so just seeking help for that alone could be a roadblock. Yes, okay. so that's why we're partnering with uh, the Quincy Public Schools mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. uh, one of our community partners, uh, Walker Therapeutic, to mm -hmm. help break that stigma. We actually had uh, participated in North Quincy High School's mental uh, well-being uh, day it was from 10:30 to like 12:45. Uh, Dove, Corey was there tabling as well as Walker and some others just to uh, give us some free swag and also mm -hmm. let them know that there are different services the youth can come uh, and that we are here for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's critical. Tina, I want to bring you in now and talk about a relatively new program that you're kind of spearheading, right? It's it's called the Quincy Community Interpretation Training Program in partnership with the city. 
Yes, so we have launched our new program with uh, City of Quincy and the CCCS. CCCS is Cross Cultural Communication System in. So we partnered with both um, of them and then we launched like a community interpretation uh, training program. So we opened like a full language uh, to the like a local community member, uh, Quincy residents, like such as Mandarin, Cantonese, okay. Vietnamese and uh, Spanish. So uh, one of their ideas is why we launched this program to help them to uh, learn something like the interpretation skills, how to do it like when they have like a public hearing, when the city have like a public meeting with the community member and also like a one-on-one -on -one like appointments and also um, like uh, maybe just like in the city hall some of the folks or the senior they come in the, uh, the city hall yeah. and they do not know how to speak English because the uh, language barrier mm -hmm. so with this training program is helping these students um, you know to learn uh, the lo like a general like a knowledge of the city and also some of the available like, resources for the community so they learn these and then they will get involved with the community and then they will help those um, like a community members like the uh, Quincy resident who has like a language barrier. So how is mm -hmm. that different from your regular English as a second language program, you know, your English training program? How do, how do those two differ? Okay. Sure, yeah, Phil, of course. Sorry to I you. guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll let you speak. Now that we can hear you, we I fixed know, the microphone. I, <laughs> I think, as Tina said, yeah. uh, the, the language access is so important sure. uh, yeah. for the city mm -hmm. and for uh, the growing Asian population, and not just Asian, for other immigrants right. as well. Yeah. So um, the city has the, the vision, and it just, I, I, I think it's personally so innovative. Uh, it's about creating that sustainable ecosystem of talent, especially for immigrants. As an immigrant, a lot of bilingual, they, some of them with a bilingual, okay. so they can give back. Yes. So this training program is training them to give back to this community, to supporting maybe uh, report card day at the public schools, mm -hmm. like what Tina's saying, city halls, and there's a public hearing, mm -hmm. uh, departments across cities. Okay. So we're partnering with a, a city planning department, Melissa Pond. Oh, sure. Yep and uh, the mayor office in terms of how can we tap into the talent pool in the city and creating that circular okay. talent. So train them and then they can give back. Okay. So it, I think it's ingenious. Training them at Quarry, training them at City Hall. Yes, so very good question. Yeah. So actually f when you're doing interpretation, there's a lot of nuances. Yes. So some people think that they they do know both languages, but sometimes those nuances is really hard to technically interpreting at the same time. Yeah. So through the partnership with the city and CCCS, they actually train, they create a curriculum that training these students mm -hmm. that who enrolled for this program to really more precisely, accurately, and more culturally to getting that message out from both sides. Okay, so, all right. Yeah. So yeah, I can give please. you an example. Mm -hmm. um, I know when it's, uh, time to vote. Yes. A lot of volunteers go there to help check off the boxes of people mm -hmm. and if also p supply language support. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, if they participate in this type of certificate training, then um, they will be able to translate or interpret more effectively for the immigrant community. Okay. Because here in Quincy, it's not just the Asian languages, but also we have Arabic, we have Spanish, we have mm -hmm. a growing Portuguese. Mm -hmm. yeah. So again, it's just uh, a great idea from City Hall to help build equity mm -hmm. uh, and access for so everyone can be an, you know, a citizen and, and give back. Yeah, is there a cost for this program? Right now there is no nope. cost. Okay. Uh, we're going through our first cohort right now. Okay. And that's gonna end in early April. Oh, all right. So, so the program is, uh, they have a screening process. Okay. Uh, so really making sure that the uh, participants, the student actually fluent in both languages. Yes. And then uh, the city provides stipend. Uh, for com people that completed the program. Okay. So it's really a women situation. Yeah. It's creating the engaging community mm -hmm. uh, with the city, uh, with the people here. Mm -hmm. So I I'm proud of that. Yeah. yeah. <coughs>
Tina, how do yes. you uh, kind of recruit people for this program? How are you reaching out, you know, to let folks know about it? So, of course, like we, we create a flyer um, and then we mention like some of the like site career, like and the class schedule, uh, language available for the community member they register. Yeah. So we create a flyer and we post the flyer on our social media, okay. uh, share with our community partners such as like AACA um, and also the City Hall and um, the other like uh, kill cap and yes. they share with like who like share with the like a bilingual staff and also bilingual like a community member who is like interesting in give it back to the community yeah. because they can use their like a bilingual like ability to help those like immigrants who don't speak English yeah. so we want to build we want to be like their voice and help them to be like a communication break the wall break the bridge like be like because of their language barrier yeah, yeah, I'm thinking mm -hmm. it must be one of, if not the most serious roadblock that immigrants have to overcome. Just thinking, if myself, if I were yeah. going to a foreign-speaking country, that would be the number mm -hmm. one problem, right, or yep. issue that you'd have yep. to address before you could really discuss anything else. Yep. You need to know how to communicate uh, in, in somebody's native language. So, so the training. Yeah. Society, yeah. So the training, see, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Go right ahead, Philip. <laughs> so the training is not only Chinese, it's also Spanish and Vietnamese. Yeah. yeah so is a very dynamic and mm -hmm. um, bring all people together. Where are you finding these trainers? Where are you finding So CCCS is a certified uh, training for mm. uh, language interpretation. Okay. Uh, we actually, before partnering with the city, uh, we, uh, as an agency, uh, during the peak of the pandemic, we launched a medical interpretation training uh, from Corey with a partnership with CCCS. So we already have experience working with them. Okay. And then somehow they were chosen as uh, one of the uh, partners to do this program. Is this kind of groundbreaking, Philip? Is, is this being done anywhere else, do you know? I think, I think the funniest thing is, wha very good question. Uh, is it groundbreaking? I think it's groundbreaking in terms of really uh, uh, tapping into the talents that we have right. within the city. Uh, and then also a, a city being a leader to willing to do something like yeah. that, uh, I think is a groundbreaking. And then I think we have over uh, more than 60 or more than that uh, to people to sign up. Well, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But of course the class is not, s we, we cannot have the capacity of 60, we screen that. Yep. And uh, so it was uh, very, very popular. Okay. So. Super. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about then the English workforce training program and, and what that is, uh, you know, different from this interpretation program. Yes. 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 So Corey has always provided this uh, ESOL classes right. from level zero where you can't speak English um, to advanced. Uh, we decided to pilot the ESOL workforce classes because, uh, especially during the pandemic, we know that there was a great need to of the students to find new jobs. They took an opportunity to learn more English and also possibly um, apply for new jobs. Uh, so we took a survey of our students and found out what the exact needs were in regards to um, what field or career path they wanted to go into. Yep. So we right now started um, three different classes and uh, those are healthcare, uh, mm -hmm. hospitality and a restaurant and then the third is business mm. and uh, mm -hmm. we're slowly growing uh, steady growth of more interest in participating in the classes because uh, a lot of the immigrants who come from wherever their native country is in the world they had jobs mm -hmm. of course you know yeah. they were managers in the restaurant mm -hmm. or they were HR director and then when they immigrated here to America because of that language barrier, it was hard for them to get back into their field. Yeah. So offering these ESOL classes for that specific career path will give them the boost and the confidence to work towards to getting back into the field that, that they are comfortable and they excel in. Yeah, they have some of the basic skills already needed, obviously, mm -hmm. if they've been working in that field. Mm -hmm. They just need to adapt it to what's required here, right, as opposed to their home country. Yeah. I, I, I taught ESOL, actually, uh, my first time 
uh, in Quarry. I was not where I am today. I started off an ESL teacher and Ooh. some of my students, I had one student who was the HR manager for a cell phone company in China. Okay. And I had uh, another favorite classmate, uh, she was a lawyer for five years mm. in Brazil. Uh, but because they came over here for family reasons and also for marriage, things like that, yeah. um, they couldn't re-enter into the workforce as an HR or mm -hmm. as a lawyer. So we want to provide this new track yeah. to encourage them and equip them so they, they can do it. Also, things like that, things like um, lawyers or, or doctors or healthcare <coughs> professionals, there are different certifications they would need in this country, right? As opposed to what they had yep. previously. And, yeah. and these ESOL tracks will help them uh, step by step. Give them the first, like, break the ice yes. for them yep. to pursue, like, the GRE or taking the LSAT, right, mm -hmm. right, yep. and then be recertified in their yeah. in their profession, right? And yeah. we're encouraging them to do this because being bilingual in Quincy, actually in America, is an asset. You know, being able to speak two languages means that you can service more people, mm -hmm. you can help more people. Yeah, particularly in urban areas, mm -hmm. you know, for sure. Um, Quincy is a great example, I would think, of a, of a microcosm of what's going on in cities and towns, you know, across the country. So it could, be, could serve as a model. Yes. Mm -hmm. I hope. Let's talk a little bit about um, AAPI Heritage Month, which is Asian American Pacific Islanders Heritage Month, right? It is May uh, this year, and every year, actually. But there's something special happening this year at Fenway Park. Philip can take that one. Okay. Oh, sure. Sure. So uh, last year we did amazing um, <coughs> work in the partnership with the city and legislators uh, in terms of standing up uh, for our brothers and sisters across the country with, you know, the growing hate crimes and stuff like that. So we have forums and rallies, you know, the mm -hmm. team be leading that and helping the youth, helping, you know, the uh, public citizens, elders and stuff like that. And this year, uh, we um, we still doing that. Uh, we're yep. going to do that, and then we're going to continue to do our whistle project that we launched last year. Oh, I do remember that. Yep, yes, to yeah. uh, stop uh, against AAPI hate. Yes. Uh, Essentially, you gave out whistles. Yeah, we uh, gave out whistles for folks so to use if they feel being threatened. Right? Yeah, yep. it's a simple too. Uh, so this year we'll continue to do it, and this year we're also being asked by the Boston Red Sox mm -hmm. uh, to uh, jumpstart to launch their celebration on May third. Okay. Uh, at Fenway Park. So we will be um, organizing the performance with uh, uh, Lion Dragon Dance, the Japanese drumming, and then we're also working with the Sox, uh, the Red Sox on uh, providing culturally sensitive uh, Pan-Asian food oh, okay. at the concessions for, oh, uh, very good. for all the uh, people. Yeah. So, yeah. And you're throwing out the first pitch, is that right? I, <laughs> because of uh, uh, State Rep Chen, uh, you know, connected. Last year I did, so. I have the video still. Oh, you did? Yeah, so it was uh, totally like 10 hours crash course. <laughs> I never I never threw a ball before that, so yeah. don't, don't tell anyone. So then, yeah, I got the call 24 hours before that. Then I, I tap into my neighbors, and then, <laughs> yes. So. Well, we can, we can move the base up a little closer to, to home plate. I, uh -huh, yes. <laughs> But so, but this is um, May third, and, and the whole month of May is the whole month in May. The right? whole month in May yeah. is yeah. So it's going to be uh, all the all the initiatives that we are doing. Really, I think the bottom line is we want to continue to work with everyone to recognize. You know, um, there's a support here. Uh, we mm. value their voice, and uh, we want to take care of our people. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right. Tina, you wanted to mention something before we uh, ran out of time about, uh, again, the interpretation program. If asking folks to join it, right? Um, yes, actually, we, we start as a uh, Rocky Salad, like we uh, start the first core on um, this uh, f um, spring. And we hope, like, we would like to continue yes. this uh, community interpretation training program in the fall and open, like, to any, like, a uh, Quincy resident who has, like, a bilingual, who has a passion and interest in giving back, helping the immigrants in Quincy uh, to break the language barrier. Because we uh, realize, like, you know, language. The access, the language barrier is very is, is is a like a is a very important like for the seniors, for the families, even for the new immigrants. They yes. first step to come here, they do not know like the language, so they do not know how to reach out like maybe seek help from city hall, from the other like a community like 
organization. So yeah. I would say, hopefully, we will like um, you know uh, launch this program. Um, we continue this program in fall and open to anyone like who has like a buying gold ability. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Available on your website. Is there information on the website about this? Uh, I think like the folks that you guys can uh, stay tuned with our social media, okay. and uh, we usually post uh, the flyer and as any like updates mm -hmm. like on our Facebook page okay. and also the WeChat account. Yep. Okay, or mm -hmm. just give you a call. Yep, <laughs> or right. give us a call. Yeah. Yep. Thank you all. Really appreciate Thank the opportunity show. to talk to you. Thank you for inviting us. Always Thank a you. pleasure. Oh, it's our pleasure. We'll Thank have you back you. too. Is this a lot more going on at Quarry that we didn't have time to, to get to today? But yep. uh, but we will. Thank you, Joe. You're very welcome. Thank Just you. enough time to check the forecast for you for the rest of the day. Today, it's going to be gorgeous. Get outside, lots of sunshine, mild temperatures up around 70 this afternoon. Tonight, uh, not too chilly, upper 40s. It's going to be kind of wet. For the first half of the weekend, it's the last weekend of winter, by the way. Yes, spring arrives on Monday, but we have to get through the rain tomorrow. A little uh, cooler on Sunday and... Uh, Monday looks like sunshine, highs in the mid-50s. Thanks again to Philip Chong, Rocky Chan, Tina Ho for joining us from Quincy Asian Resources. Thanks to our crew. Thank you for watching. Monday here on the program, Alice Arena from the Four River Residents Against the Compressor Station will be joining us. Please go to our website anytime. It's QATV.org. You'll find all of our latest programs there. There's news and information, video on demand, live streaming, and a whole lot more. For all of us here at QATV, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a great weekend.